Welcome to Signal and System Lecture Series. Here in this session, I'll be going to explain invertible and non-invertible system. So, what is invertible and what is non-invertible system? So, see, a system is said to be invertible if the input of system appears at output side. Then only we can be able to invert that. If input is not appearing at output side, then it is impossible to invert that. So, how to identify whether given system is invertible or not? So, for that, let us have one case. Like see, over here, we have input x of t. And we have system that is having impulse response h1 of t. And we are getting output, let us say y1 of t. Now, here this system can be inverted only if output is having component of input. So if input is appearing at output side, then only we can place second system, let us say H2 of T and then one can have output YT that is X of T means you are again getting input signal. So that data of input one can retrieve only if you have component of input of that given system, right? So here given system is H1 of T and response is Y1 of T. If you have output Y1 of T, if it is not having input component X, XT, then you cannot have output after any other system which is resulting into input if you don't have component of input over here. So to understand that, if I explain you this with response, then it will be little more easier to understand. So here we have response of H1 of T and that response is what? Y1 of T is equals to See, response that we can have it based on convolution. So, convolution of xt with h1 of t. And in frequency domain, in frequency domain, we can write that as per y1 of f is equals to x of f into h1 of f. There are some other ways even like you can write in s domain you can say y of s y1 of s is equals to x of s into h1 of s. And there are some other domain even z domain even in z transform we can represent y of z is equals to x of z into h1 of z. Even in Fourier transform we can represent that y1 of omega is equals to x of omega h1 of omega. So in frequency domain it is directly multiplication and in time domain it will be convolution. So y1 of t that is xt into convolution of h1 of t. Now when you place another system h2 of t you will be getting your output yt. So response of H2 of T, so that is Yt and that will be convolution of Y1 of T input with H2 of T. Now if you place Y1 of T that is this, so you will be finding Y1 of T is Xt convolution with H1 of T convolution with H2 of T. So this is what your output response y of t and in frequency domain in frequency domain you can say y of f that is equals to x of f into h1 of f into h2 of f. So this is how we can have y of f and here if h1 of f into h2 of f if it is equals to 1 
in that case we can say y of f is equals to x of f and if you take inverse laplace of this or inverse fourier transform so means you need to do inverse transform it could be inverse zen transform it could be inverse laplace transform it could be inverse fourier transform so by inverse transform we can have y of t that is equals to x of t and if it is happening in that case we can say given system is invertible system so this is what the basic thing that we need to keep in our mind the so system is said to be invertible system only if input is appearing at output side so here if i consider this is my system right and if input is not appearing over here in that case you cannot have another system which will retrieve your input again so output that is what convolution of input and system and in frequency domain it will be multiplication only so if you place another system you will be getting again response and to have invertible system this is the condition h1t h2t should be equals to 1 then only y of f is equals to x of f is possible and you can have inverse transform to retrieve your original signal at output side so this is how we can identify whether given system is invertible or not i hope that you have understood this thank you so much for watching this video please give your valuable suggestions definitely based on your suggestions in future i'll make videos to solve all those queries and that will be helpful to students those who are learning here from my channel thank you so much for watching this video